CryptoZoo.co. I am so excited about this project. It's, it's, it's so fun. It's a really fun game that makes you money. A fun game that earns you money. How much did you guys make from CryptoZoo? I lost around $50,000 in CryptoZoo. I lost $40,000. I lost around 15,000 US dollars. I lost $25,000. $120,000. $500,000 Australian, which is half a million in CryptoZoo. Shut up! No, you haven't! Yeah, 500K. Oh, no. Today, we're investigating Logan Paul's CryptoZoo, a blockchain game that made millions but never worked. Some of you guys think you know the story, but it goes so much deeper. I've uncovered sociopaths, billionaires, fake orphans. Did I mention fake orphans? And of course, at the center of it, we have Logan Paul himself who has abandoned this thing, leaving thousands of fake orphans in his wake. Wait a second. Thousands of victims in his wake. Now, you'll be hearing from some of those people because their stories are heartbreaking. This is the first in a three-part series that's been a year in the making. And if you like high effort investigations like this one, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I don't take sponsors, we are viewer supported. So if you want to and are able to, thank you. Either way, enjoy the video. For the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. We have a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's gonna work. September 1st, CryptoZoo.co. We okay. don't scam. That's I've fine. never scammed anyone before. Logan mm -hmm. cares extremely deeply about his audience, loves his audience, loves his brand, doesn't have to f scam to make money. Welcome to part one, the million dollar mystery that began this whole story. Like many people, I first heard about CryptoZoo from a podcast Logan runs called Impulsive which was the experience of a lot of people that I spoke to. So I first heard about it on the Logan Paul podcast. Impulsive, I think. It was off the one of the impulsive episodes. The thing that I'm most excited for, and this is the first time I've ever said anything about this. For the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. I think there, ne I think there needs to be a fresh take, and this project that I have uh, is that fresh take. Now look. At first, I was just as surprised at this pitch as anyone else because I just got finished roasting Logan for a different coin called Dink Doink, which his fans lost money on. I'm a Dink Doink fan. Dumbest I've ever seen, that's why I'm all in. It's comedic, it's fun, it's comedy. Now look, I know Logan and his friends tried to make it look like Dink Doink was all about the memes, but it turns out they secretly were tied to the project and Logan created the Dink Doink character himself and subsequently abandoned that project. So if you invested in it, you got blasted and Logan rightfully took a lot of heat for Dink Doink, which is why I was surprised when he seemingly immediately jumped into another crypto project. But Logan insisted CryptoZoo, it was different. It wasn't his friend's project this time, it was his. And it wasn't even a project at all. It was a game that could earn you money. I'm, I'm excited to launch uh, to launch my game. You keep using a, and you just did it again. You keep using a word there, game. You're not using like a project. It's a game. It's a game. It's a fun, it's a really fun game that makes you money. Now you might be wondering, how's it possible to earn money from a game? Well, let me try to break it down for you. This is how it was supposed to work. You started by buying this crypto token called Zoo which is their in-game currency. And you use zoo coins to then buy egg NFTs, which you can then hatch to become animals. You then can breed those two animals to become hybrid animals. For example, if you breed a gorilla and a kitten, you get a gore kitty. And the more rare the NFT, the higher the daily yield of zoo tokens that animal earns you every day. Theoretically, it works like almost like passive income. You can then burn your animal NFTs to release the zoo they earned back to you. And from there, you can invest it into eggs or just cash out. Now, some of you of the Egyptian persuasion might notice some triangular qualities to this game description. But let's not be too quick to judge because remember, there are a lot of NFT games built on this model. It's called play to earn. Now, Logan admits that there are other games like his, but what's gonna really make his stand out is that other games have randomly generated assets. His game has handmade art. It's quick to make a digital asset with, you know, unique randomly generated characteristics. We handmade art. 
for the past six months, bro. Approval, very specific notes, 10 different artists making art for our project. Now I'll admit, this all sounds very enticing. Handmade art, a fun game that can earn you money, and one of the biggest influencers in the world backing it. You might think, how can I lose? Which is why when people were told all you had to do to play was buy an egg, people spent millions. Just on the first launch between ETH and Zoo, people bought $2.5 million worth of eggs in the first day. And did I mention the game hadn't even been launched yet? All people were buying was the marketing and the promises. And it wasn't just the NFTs they bought either. The Zoo token also skyrocketed in value, reaching a $2 billion market cap pre-game launch, right? The trading volume was in the tens of millions of dollars per day which kind of is like Fortnite not coming out, but people trading tens of millions of dollars in V-Bucks every day. That's what this was like. And I know it sounds stupid to buy an influencer project, but you have to understand people saw Logan as different. It was Logan Paul at the end of the day, an internet personality that I actually trusted, that I actually kind of believed in. Obviously when someone so influential releases something, everyone wants to be a part of it. I still believe in this false fallacy that everyone else started believing that Logan Paul's a changed man. I thought it was a safe place having a, a guy like that identify, like Logan Paul being the head of the project. They had seen this story he had been telling everyone that uh, he was this reformed influencer, right? That he was no longer a reckless clout goblin just in it for the money. They thought this time it's different. Logan Paul couldn't possibly scam us, right? But as the game got closer to release, the CryptoZoo team started releasing the first ever photos of these animals. And come to find out this handmade art story wasn't really true. It was actually Adobe stock photos mashed together. This was the sort of first red flag of this project. And I made a video about it at the time, um, but it was kind of surface level and something didn't add up beneath the surface. Something where I just couldn't shut this case down in my head. It was actually part of the announcement video that they, something they said. See if you can spot it. We have a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's going to work. On development. Yeah. That's the line that started this whole mystery. We spent a million dollars on development. I couldn't get this out of my head. You know, is he lying? There's no way he expects people to believe he spent it on art. So wait, maybe he spent it on blockchain stuff, right? That's what I thought. But then I audited the smart contract and it's not handmade at all. It's not even original. It's what's called a fork, a copy of, you know, some other code that exists out there. One of them is called Floki Shib X, which launched before it. So where'd this million dollars go? I, I didn't understand. And Logan just kept repeating this claim. We put hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. Uh, personally, the whole team, a million plus. Now at the time I'm looking into this, there's a teaser going around for hatch day which is the day you can hatch your egg NFTs. And it kind of symbolized the true launch of crypto. So I thought maybe this is it. Maybe this is where they spent all the money on their game. Even their community manager, Ben Roth, promised people after hatch day, things will take a turn for the 180. So I put Ben Roth on the board too. I needed to know all the characters in CryptoZoo and I waited. And finally, on November 3rd, 2021, Ben Roth turned out to be right. Things did take a turn on hatch day, only for the worse. Let's meet one of the victims, Helicopter Bob, to explain more. My name is Rob, Helicopter Bob, lost just under $7,000 with CryptoZoo. And the first thing I asked Bob was about his animals. If he was making money with CryptoZoo, how much he made, and if the passive yield worked. Oh, it never did from the beginning. There, it wasn't even written into the contract where it showed that you could, that you were actually yielding Zoo, but there was nothing that was actually, you know, backing that up. There was no way to claim your yield. There never was. Wait, 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 wait. Play that again. Did you hear that? There was no way to claim your yield. There never was. Hold on. The core mechanic of CryptoZoo that you can make money with these stupid animals didn't even work on launch day and still, to this day, a year later, still does not work, is what the investors are saying. Which this is just crazy. People spent millions of dollars on these eggs. But it even gets worse because I kept talking to people and I discovered something. Because remember I told you, you could buy eggs with those zoo coins? Well, apparently they also made it so you could buy them with 
Ethereum. And on the day of selling, about half of these purchases took place with Ethereum. Only it turns out for the people who spent ETH, not only did the yield part of it not work, did the NFTs not pay you, you also couldn't even hatch them. So I acquired a bunch of eggs and, and I actually want to play the game. I didn't acquire the eggs with the intent of keeping them. I actually wanted to hatch them and see what I got out of them and, and play in this ecosystem that's, that's been advertised or whatever, right? And then I can't do anything. It's not showing up on the website when I connect my wallet, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm a little baffled. I'm like, is I, I must be doing something wrong. So I open up, I open up a support ticket. I open up a support ticket with CryptoZoo and Ben Roth is actually the person answering my support ticket. Oh yeah, no, no, it's 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 down for the moment, but we're working on it. Let me tell you, it's 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 never been it's never been up. <laughs> Wait, you can't even hatch? No. Do you, it's, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. There's nothing I could do with it. You're kidding! You can't hatch? There's nothing I could do with it. Uh, you could ask. You could ask any of those community guys. That's uh, basically worth nothing whatsoever. Wow. So on launch day, basically nothing worked, and a year later, that's still true. Now, after this was discovered, the price of Zoo fell 63% in just 24 hours. And at this point, Logan Paul basically goes silent on CryptoZoo. No more podcast mentions. No more saying he handmade art. CryptoZoo already got millions in investments, but Logan only speaks in the Discord twice over the next year to say, quote, sober, currently shaking my head, and yo. That was his contribution to this project. Meanwhile, his community manager, Ben Roth, was actively claiming that Logan was going to be marketing CryptoZoo any day now. He told people things like, Logan is an uncontrollable marketing guru. It's over when we launch. And when we have a product to market, it'll get marketed. And marketing will crush, I promise you. And this disconnect between Logan abandoning the project and his team on CryptoZoo saying that he hadn't, saying that it was gonna be any day now, left investors feeling like they were being led on. All you had to do was go on and tell us, look, there's something going on with this project, I'm, I'm abandoning it or whatever, before people got more and more trapped. And promising and promising, yeah, this is going to be great. But when it came to actually doing anything, he, he just hid away from it. Have some decency to come out, talk to the people that invested initially, that invested along the way on all of the fake and false promises and all of the false hype and be honest with people. Because surely Logan Paul, who's got this billion dollar hydration company and, and WWE star, is got enough money, it doesn't need to, to rug us a lot. And it's because of these false promises about marketing that these poor investors believed in CryptoZoo so long, they sat and watched every Logan Paul episode trying to guess and decipher when this so-called marketing push would happen. And Logan and his team really fed into this with a lot of cryptic messages. Only a month after CryptoZoo's launch, uh, actually, the hatch day, they started teasing this. Not too much of this is out, but he, he's been working on a massive project. And the one, one of them will be the biggest thing I ever do. It'll be the, it's like my, my life and soul is wow. put into this project, is where, which is where most of my time these days goes. Wow, surely this secret project that Logan put his soul into is CryptoZoo, right? You know, the project he launched a month ago? Well, his fans certainly thought so. I'm like, holy cow, it makes so much sense. He's talking about CryptoZoo. Ben and the dudes are like, like putting smiley faces and, and egging the rest of the community. Like, this is it guys, you know, this is what we've been working towards. I mean, this is it, this, this is, this, it's finally happening. Logan's gonna market the project. And they kept saying that Logan's gonna market the project and it's gonna change everything. So now imagine their surprise when another clip surfaces of Logan finally admitting this secret project isn't CryptoZoo at all. It's something else entirely. I'll tell you about this project when uh, we get closer to launch. Yeah, yeah. This project line is going to be. Is that the thing with the egg? The, like the zoo? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Okay, this one, one this one's This one's going to be, yeah. yeah. This will be, be the craziest we've ever done. Oh, man. Can you imagine if you're one of these investors and Logan Paul's going pitching this new secret project and you're thinking it's CryptoZoo and someone's like, oh, is it that? Is it that thing with the eggs? And he's like, no, no, no. No, no. Definitely, definitely not. That was the last project. This is the real project that I'm working on. Thankfully, people didn't just let this slide because as he went around making the rounds on his new project called 99 Originals, people were like, hey, didn't you just abandon your last one? And unsurprisingly, it's not his fault. It's the bad actors who ruined the project. 
as I see people giving multiple explanations for why these haven't worked, and you know there's accusations out there. How does it make you feel when people are doing these takedown videos about your NFT projects previously? Uh, it's it's sad because of what I just said. Mm. There's so much going on behind the scenes. Like, Doug, I'm not the bad guy here. Yeah, yeah. There's some actual out there. Yeah. And I'm, it's not me. Like, I'm here to build. This is a space where a lot of people do see dollar signs. Like any burgeoning industry, if there's money to be made, there's going to be both good and bad people. Um, there's a lot of shady characters in the crypto space. I'm learning all of it. We had a an issue with um, CryptoZoo, where our, our, our lead developer uh, took the code that he made, fled to Switzerland, actually fled to Switzerland, and like held it hostage for a million dollars. Like behind the scenes drama that like like took took uh took a stick and stuck it in the spokes of my wheels oh well that wasn't expected there's a shady developer who held up logan's code hostage in switzerland that's why this hasn't worked the whole time he held it hostage for a million dollars well let's add that to the board i mean isn't the mystery solved now obviously the first thing i wanted to do was hunt down this developer who will be calling z here and find out the truth of what happened why did he steal Logan's code for a million dollars? However, I finally got a hold of him, and when I did, he admitted he took the code hostage, but he says the reason for it was nothing like what Logan had said. He never, literally never paid me anything at all, ever. I never paid. And uh, you know, we got to a point when I was working on it where I just realized they were just going to try to steal all of my work and not pay me. So I took all the source code private. And I, I just kind of like spent like a month just trying to negotiate and um, get, get something figured out where I would finally get paid. Because like I'm on my end, I have a team of 30 engineers, so I'm earning fifty thousand dollars a week on building this building this thing. And um, the only thing they brought to the table were a bunch of Photoshop JPEGs. So Z claims he wasn't blackmailing anyone. He had to hire a team to develop this whole thing, and he just wanted to be paid for the work they did. According to him, they negotiated a $1 million payday for this whole project. And from the second I heard that, I thought, oh, that's interesting because Logan claims he spent a million dollars on this whole thing. And this developer saying he's owed a million dollars on this project. Now, I didn't want to just take one person's word for it. So I later confirmed with another developer who worked for something called the Blockchain Center that he also hadn't been paid. Uh, we've been paid nothing. I would have loved to have Zoo, but I don't have any. So that's multiple sources working on the CryptoZoo team project who were not paid. Now, obviously, these are big accusations, which is why I wanted to confront Logan Paul on them. But unfortunately, we're not exactly on speaking terms. So I wondered, how could I speak to Logan without speaking to Logan? And that's when I found out there was someone who might know just as much about this whole story. And I will explain everything one day with my manager who's like, in charge now. Logan Paul's manager, a guy named Jeff Levin. He might be just what we need to settle this whole thing. So I gave him a call. Hello? Hey, Jeff. Hey, uh, sorry to bother you. This is Steven with CoffeeZilla. I'm calling because I've heard reports that CryptoZoo hasn't paid their development team. And I'm just reaching out for comment before I do this story. Um, I got your number from one of the development team and uh, they just wanted to, I just want to follow up on that. Um, I have no comment for it. Okay, you're, are you guys denying it? Or are you saying it's not true? There's no comment. I don't think that the information is true. Okay, because they're saying a million dollars hasn't been paid in development for CryptoZoo. <laughs> and Logan Paul said publicly that it has been paid. Um, so... I mean, it's pretty serious accusation, and obviously, I don't want to just run a story. If you guys have a whole side to I know, your but story here, your, your job, your job as a as a um, as someone that is reporting news is to actually verify correct news. Right. That's why I'm calling you. I know, and that's legal grounds for that stuff. So I'm just telling you, legally, you have to report correct news with verifiable information. Right, that's why I'm calling you. They've given me a yeah, lot of I'm, things. A lot of evidence. Okay, well, okay. You can you can have the evidence you want, but I'm just letting you know, if you report anything on us, I, I appreciate your business. I appreciate you as a person. And I'm just telling you, you know, from a legal standpoint, 
as we've been advised always, is if anybody reports fake news, that's where we won't, you know. Yeah, this call was a mess. Jeff, Logan's manager, seems to be implying that I'm not allowed to repeat allegations his own development team made, even though Logan can go on podcasts and publicly accuse those developers of stealing his code. Not only that, he's the one who refuses to provide any evidence, but seems to sort of be implying that maybe we'll sue you if you tell this to anyone, which he then denies doing when I ask him if that's what he's doing. Told you I have no comment to it. Telling you once again, from a legal standpoint, you have to report truth. If you do not verify truth, then you're just allegations. And those then will be handled the way that we want to handle them. Wait, so you're saying, you're saying that. you refuse to no give comment. me proof that the no allegations comment. aren't true, but if I report on the I allegations, no you guys might sue. No, no, I did not say that. I did not say that. Oh, I, 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 again, I'm just, I'm trying to read between no the comments. lines. Don't read between the lines. Okay. Listen to okay. the exact words that I'm saying. Okay. Listen to the exact words I'm saying. I'm listening. I have no comment on the situation. Okay. Your job legally is to report facts. If you don't report facts on the information you're given, it is illegal. Yes, that was a real conversation with a real person. Now, I'm no lawyer, but I don't think it's a crime to say that multiple developers say they haven't been paid and Logan's team refuses to provide any evidence or like statements or wire transfers that they have. Which, by the way, seems incredibly ironic given just how much Logan whines about not being paid by Floyd Mayweather. Where's my money, bitch? Floyd never paid me for our fight. Who am I, the IRS? Nope, but you might be the CryptoZoo dev team. Now, in all seriousness, I do want to acknowledge something which actually kind of looks bad a bit on the developers because it turns out very few written contracts were actually done. So much of this were verbal deals like, oh, we'll take care of you. We'll give you 350K. We'll give you a million. We'll give you whatever. But then when it was time to actually sign the deals, there's just always delays. What kind of promises were made to you? Uh, verbal promises, basically. So uh, verbal promises, and then we follow up with like a physical paper agreement. But that's when communication broke down. This is where I think the dev guys screwed up and led to this whole situation of like, okay, we're just gonna take the code private until you pay us for our work. And to be clear, I'm not justifying not paying someone for what they did. I'm just playing devil's advocate and saying, this could have all been avoided by just getting every detail in writing. And I think it's just a good general lesson. But if you're thinking that that's the million dollar mystery solved, well, no, because this still doesn't make sense. Why not just pay the dev team what you publicly said you kind of already paid them? Why not pay for a game that now isn't launched and now investors are so angry about? Why not pay when you already made millions from minting the eggs on this game? Well, this is where things get even stranger because right when I was ready to pin everything on Logan, and believe me, he is at fault, I was speaking to the Z developer and I heard a name that I hadn't heard before. I basically um, came in with Eddie and Eddie, Eddie promised me, you know, 5% of the tokens and a million dollars. He never, he never, literally never paid me. Wait a second, who's Eddie? I thought that all of this was Logan Paul. I only put it together when the blockchain center guys also said a similar thing about their deal. They said they were promised 350K and it was Ibanez. They say they had no communications with Logan, but we know they weren't talking about different people. They both dealt with the same guy. So the guy's name, I put it together, must be Eddie Ibanez. Turns out he was managing the developers. What's this random guy doing in Logan Paul's project? And who is he? Who is Eddie Ibanez? Yes, hi, my name is Eddie Ibanez, lead developer here at CryptoZoo. This reporter says Eddie's entire story is fake. Wait, what? To continuously lie, lead people on, hype people up, to put more money in. All the, all the while in the background, things are going down, things are hitting the fan, and you left us holding the bag. Logan, you stole 40 million in tokens from me. You are a scam artist. You are a liar and you betrayed your own community. You aren't that guy. Logan replies, oh, trust me, bro. I am that guy. 